am Cinnamon Cooney, the Art Sherpa. This is Heart Party. We're gonna open your heart and access your art in one hour and teach you to do this painting. Do it step by step. It's great for beginners. It's great for new and reborn artists. I want you to grab your paints, grab your stuff, grab your coffee, whatever you need. Meet me back at the Cecil right now. Come on. Hello, my friends. The time of day is It's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa. We're about to start our heart party. Now, this painting, The Blossoms, is for really beginning artists. Like, if you have never painted before, this is another one of those good entry paintings. It's a good one for little brushes, and it's still a good one for experienced brushes. Um, I've had some really experienced artists come in and do very creative stuff with it. So, hopefully you're ready to get your flowers on and get your creativity on. We're going to have our essential tools here, right? Which is our, our brushes, a bunch of half inch angles, you know, some nice little details. And of course, a nice about any, any one inch wide brush that's, you know, got a nice flick back will work for you. But you can do these from like economically priced brushes all the way up to your very pricey hand gathered from mountain chinchilla brushes if you feel like you need to. Of course we're acrylic painters so <laughs> we'll leave the hand gathered chinchilla stuff to the oil painters. All right so I've got my uh, chalk here and as always as the Sherpa says you've got um, your kids chalk will absolutely work. Got my positive attitude and remember today we're gonna open our hearts and access our art because that is where the art is. Now, I like to say creativity is like a seed in your soul. And if you nurture it through a creative practice, then it will grow and grow and grow. All right, so you're ready to start your creative practice. You're feeling brave. You're forgetting everything that crazy art teacher ever said to you, unless they said something encouraging and then remember it right now. We're gonna just lay in where our blooms are going to be. So up here in the upper part of my canvas on the left hand side, I am going to put in a half circle. I'm just sketching a little nice half circle. And that half circle is about a hand width. It's about one hand width. So we've got the nice little hand width up there in the half circle. And then right here, oh my little hand cam is not doing what it, there it is, is going to put in a nice circle down here in the lower corner, about a hand in and a hand up. I'm going to put in a little three and a half, four inch bloom. Now look, if you're a basketball player and you are uh, secretly painting with me, if you're a basketball player and you're painting with me, one, immediately get on Facebook and tell me because that's awesome. But to make adjustments for the fact that you may have bigger hands than others around you, we're talking Sherpa size hands. That's our size requirement here. <laughs> definitely, definitely guys, if you're painting along with me, if you're a first timer, watch the whole thing, you're gonna get addicted. And if you are coming back from having painted with me a lot, remember, click, comment, subscribe, share your artwork. All right, up here in the upper right corner, it's again about a hand down and about a hand over, a little over a hand over. So I have that in. Now, we're going to get out our trusty half inch ankle brush. I'm going to come over my palette, palette cam on and I'm going to take a scotch, a smidge, a small amount of black, right? Just a tiny amount. And I'm going to bring it over to my burnt sienna and I'm going to burn that sienna up a little more. Oh yes. Oh, let's go over the uh, colors that we're painting with today. We got burnt sienna, yellow ochre or yellow oxide, phthalo blue, cad yellow, cad red, mars black, and titanium white. And today we are painting uh, with Matisse paints, but this will work with any good heavy bodied acrylic. 
Now, I'm going to come and I'm going to very carefully, on the flat, paint in my little interior circles. This is nature. And nature and art are not about obvious perfection, so it's okay to not have things be perfect. So there's a little wonk in nature. Matter of fact, your little art brain looks for wonkiness, wants to see it, wants difference. That's ecology. Kind of. Sherpacology. Sherpacology. I'm really excited about my, my new hat today. I've got a really special birthday party coming up that I get to do for one of my daughter's friends. She's a little pony fan, so there's a part of me that thinks I must have some brony painters that paint along with me. You know, friendship is magic and all of that. And if you are, get online and let me know. Let me know. Go right there. Remember, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Pinterest. If you want to see other people's paintings, how they're doing, you can go right on Pinterest. And there's a beautiful collection of over 200 paintings that have been shared with me that were done right here on YouTube. How awesome is that? Oh, look at this. We have three brown dots. Could not have been any easier. Rinse out your brush. Rinse, 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 rinse. Grab your trusty paper towel. Check to make sure your paint's off. Now, the uh, next really fun thing that we're going to do is we're going to just paint in the petals. Super easy. We're going to start with yellow. And these are really sort of just squares. And I'm going to start with my cad yellow and a little bit of white. All right? And I'm going to come and make a mark right there. And about an inch over, I'm going to make another mark. I'm going to come out a little bit wide. It's not quite a triangle. It's not quite a rectangle. It's kind of not those things. And somebody who's a teacher is probably going to be like, it's this shape. Geometry. Sherpa, use it. Probably. We don't, we don't mind that. We don't get upset about that. That's awesome. So I've got this first yellow petal in. And my yellow petal is about the same width, the diameter of my uh, dot. I'm trying to make these big things. This is actually, if you love mid-century modern, <laughs> You are freaking out right now and just loving this. I've added some more white to my yellow, so it's like a ducky color. I come over about the same distance. I make another one of those. Yeah, there we go. Look at that nice color. A little lighter yellow. This is based on Mary Mecco, one of my favorite designers. Who had some great stuff. My mom certainly had that when I was young. It left an impression on me. Now I'm going to come over to the cad yellow, cadmium, no, no, yellow, iron oxide yellow, what am I saying? Shout it out, if you see I get it wrong, be like, no, Sherpa, it's yellow oxide, it's not cad, look out, and I'll hear you from at home, because I'm listening, I actually do, I read everything that you write me, I read all of your emails, I look at all of your pictures, and try to answer everything, um, if I ever miss anything, it literally is just that somehow I have just missed it accidentally. I'm just, I flaked. That's all it ever is. I'm going to come mix a little of this iron, this ochre, with this cad. Oh, see, I got it that time. Because you shouted at home, and I heard you. That's the, that's the magic of YouTube. I can, I can hear you. You're with me. At home. Me too. Always stop, take a dance break. Today I'm drinking water, which is maybe not my favorite, but I am. Because I'm getting in sharp shape, so I gotta, gotta drink my water. Gotta be healthy. Consider the future, because it's, it's about whole integrated living, isn't it? And then also, people keep posting things on Facebook that make me afraid of the food I'm eating. 
<laughs> I don't know if you have that experience. Oh, love Facebook. I hate it. All the craziness. I love seeing you guys have your lives and having moments on Facebook. I try to try to keep up on it there. Oh, see, see this multi-tonal flower. This is going to be just so great. This is a really good graphic piece. This is a good piece for a gift. It's it's good in a kitchen. Um, it's just good in the home. There's a lot of customization. Here come another inch over, making that little shape again. Uh, that you can do with this. You can make it your own. I love it when you guys, you know, do exactly what I'm doing here. But when you make it your own, it's even better. All right, so you see how every petal, I'm changing up this color. This is a little bit like that sunflowers, if you've done that with me, where I'm one color and I get a little bit of different color in it, another little color. I'm going to rinse out. If you're drinking water like I am, here is your Sherpa survival tip of the day. Keep your water glass far, far away from your paint water or you will be drinking paint water. And the whole art world is a Twitter because there is some concern that the cadmium colors might be uh, dangerous and adjusted. So please don't let your kids eat paint, I guess is what they're saying. And you should not also eat paint. Oof, my new hat. Tangled Threads. This is who does this. It's Tangled Threads. Yeah, and this is a sassy apron. I don't get paid by them. These are just what I buy. And maybe you want to buy it too. So, just in case you want to buy two, I tell you. I'm going to take a little bit of white, grab a little bit of my CAD, my yellow, come right here. You're going to notice that I'm making some artistic decisions here, right? In that I'm not making the petals exactly the same shape. I'm trying to create a little wave to the edge here. Because nature likes to have be in threes when you're doing paintings. It likes the irregularities. If nature gets all orderly on you and makes a pattern, you can really see or something really recognizable. It's generally saying to you, I'm poisonous and I will end your life very quickly. So back away from that part of nature. <laughs> that part of nature is about to get you and end you. And I know I have uh, friends painting with me all over the world, and some of you guys have more aggressive nature than others. Like, yeah, I'm in Houston, so I have really not uh, fire ants, which are not from here. But they are highly aggressive, and we don't like them. Mm -mm. There's, no, there's no good reason for a fire ant. And don't, don't be messaging me going, yes, there is. They're so important. Like, whatever part of the world they were important in, it ain't here. What they are here is just impossible to eradicate. That's what we got here. All right, I'm going to get some more yellow ochre. Now, here's the deal. If you're having any difficulty, I'm going to tell you a little trick. It is not you. It is the paint. It is the brush, or it is the teacher. And I know you guys always say, it's not the teacher, but I may not be explaining it to you the way you need to hear it. Okay? It is not you. We are all born creative. That is in us. That is part of our species imperative, which is why we've been doing that for all the history of everything, is that's what we're meant to do. That's what we're for. I'm going to see this. Ooh, it's looking so beautiful already. Now, I want you to rinse out your brush. If you're very, very new to painting, get a piece of scratch paper out and get a little bit of paint. If you're having any difficulty, and I want you to do some troubleshooting, make your brush strokes. If you paint on the very edge of this brush right here, short bristles first, long bristles finishing, you can get some very thin controlled lines. And if you paint on the wide, you get these wide lines. And just experiment with what it takes to get the paint. Now, as you see as I'm going, oh, there's less paint. And I'm not getting anywhere. All right, this happens to you guys on your canvases all the time. I'm not getting anywhere, Sherpa. I just, I'm painting, it's not working. If you're brushing the canvas and it's not getting any uh, darker or any more color, you don't have enough paint. That's all that's happened to you. You're not somehow unable to operate brush. Just go back, get a little water, and rinse, 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 rinse. Get your brush a little moist. These are water-based paints. 
with your acrylic water based paints and get a little more paint. That's all you have to do. It's very simple. Just breathe and go, I got it. All right, darker flowers. So let's do, let's do a flower over here. I'm going to get into the orange. I'm going to mix some of this cad and some of this cad red and this cad yellow. Let's get into the orange flower. Oh, yes. Make a mark over about an inch and then decide my petal size. Oh, gosh, I love this. Now, one trick that I do because I've been painting longer than we need to talk about. All right? Let's see if that is seeing what I'm doing. Are you seeing what I'm saying? <laughs> Cartoon Network. Ah. Watch a lot of that. I got kids. You got kids. You probably do too. Ugh. Or some cartoon of what's going on in your area. Because, again, friends from all over the world. You have something your kids are watching that you would not normally watch. Unless you're Brony. And then you're watching right along with me. Don't, don't have so many bronies. I have nothing but love for bronies. I think it's the coolest thing ever that you guys have like embraced the pony life. Yes. Equestria. Good for the spirit. All right. Now, I have gotten some more cad red. I've darkened that color. You're going to notice as I am mixing paint, another troubleshooting thing, paint management. Paint management is important because if you go right to the center of your paint plot, you could put out on your little plate or paper palette, you're going in the center and you're going in the center and you're shoveling, you're going to run out of paint. You're going to be like, this is a really expensive hobby and I don't know why I can afford it. They want a lot of money for this paint. Now, mix to these outer edges here. Another trick you guys have been asking. My paint's drying out. Sherpa, how do I keep my paint? This misty, misty, misty on the paint helps prevent it drying out. The other thing you can do is you can store your paint, whether it's on a plate or a palette, in a cake plate. You know, like what you get from the grocery store, those plastic blown little cake plates. Just wash that and keep that. Pop that in there. You put a wet paper towel and mist it a little bit. It'll keep overnight. So you can stop losing all that paint. Or you can buy a very nice wet palette. Which is, I think I have that on my uh, Pinterest board of things that you would want. Getting more cad yellow right now. Um, to purchase. Oh yes, I have all kinds of Pinterest things going on. You should go on Pinterest. and You should follow. I have a whole board of quick links to all the stuff. All the stuff we use here. So you're not looking for it. I just quick linked it for you. So you can get there easy. You're not guessing. Because I was like, again, answering everyone's email and just sending them those links. And I'm like, you know, I should just make an easier way. I'm going to get more yellow again. It takes very little cad red to affect your yellow. The, the, the cad red that's on your brush is going to impact your yellow. You push hard and you get into that. And then you get these beautiful... We like to call it painterly techniques. It's just artists being relaxed about stuff, not being super intense. But listen, be intense. If you're an intense person, be intense. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. If you're type A and everything is color coded and neat and tidy, then for goodness sakes, your painting should be the same. This is the one place that nobody can give you any grief for being who you are. Like right here, on this way, nobody gives me any grief. Okay? So maybe your friends are like, oh my god, Melanie, why do you have to be so type A? Everything doesn't have to be so perfect all the time. Well, maybe it does for you. Maybe that is what you're bringing to the world. Is that order? Well, you can bring it in your painting and everyone will just appreciate that in you. You'll be like, oh my god. I wish the other moms were like this all the time. I'm, I'm not type A, clearly. But I have them in my life, and I love and appreciate them so much. They do. They bring so much order to the world. And the world needs some order. It needs some craziness, but it needs some organization and some labeling and some project planning. 
That's what the world needs. See how easily we're just getting through this flower? This is just one of those paintings that it's easy. It's fun. It's for everybody. You know, this is a good one to get your girlfriends. Ooh, I'm gonna come in here and we'll do we add a little white to my brush. You see that? A little white. Throw throw one up in here in this puddle. So I got a little yellow and a little white, but I didn't rinse it. Get your girlfriends, get your husband. Actually, husbands like to do this painting. It's relaxing. They don't find it irritating. <laughs> they're actually usually quite good at it. And then they're like, hey, I kind of like painting. That's kind of okay. Sometimes you can't get them out to go do it. You can get them to do it at home. We have uh, a few of you who've been sharing any painting with your husbands. I think that's an ideal date night. I drag my husband to all kinds of art events. <laughs> Besides having pulled him into my mad heart party plans here in editing, John Cooney, who edits these. So if you want them faster, that's that's what's between you and a finished video. Him and his money earning job. <laughs> With the earning of money that pays the bills. You may hear my kids. They are being watched. But that does not mean they will be quiet. But they might be. They might be quiet. And now I have a furry child. That's new. That's what's new in the Sherpa's world. Of course, if this is your first video, you're like, I did not know that was new. But it is. It's new in a furry child. I have a real German Shepherd. And she, like, actually speaks German. And she sits and she stays. And she does all the tricks and she's super obedient and I just am really enjoying it and she's also very sweet but all my neighbors think she's gonna eat them. I thought that's good but it is funny. It is funny. I'm having hat issues. So it's gonna be another one of those videos where my husband edits and makes fun of my hat issues. So we just have this flower up here and here's what you have to decide. You want it to be redder, oranger. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go I'm going to start actually doing the color. This color here, I've got the cad and yellow in here, so it's sort of the orange. But it's going to be peach because, see, we've made secondary colors because we mixed red and yellow and we made orange. That's a secondary color. But when we add white, that's a third color into it. We call those tertiaries. Now you're ready for art history, right? Now you're ready for like art, art class in college. You'll be like going in there. Tertiary color. It's a tertiary. It's just like once you get your orange and purple and green done, everything else you do to is tertiary. That's how simple that is. Everything in art that seems complicated has some actually very simple answer. Coming out an inch over here, making my little wide shape. It can touch if you want it to, but I want to, I don't want it to touch, so I'm not going to let it touch. You can touch if you want to. You can do anything you you can paint. You can paint. I don't want to get sued on YouTube, so I'm going to stop now. Oh my god. Oh, copyright law. Oh my god. All right. Since I'm a teacher, I'm going to teach you about copyright. So basically here I'm putting this on YouTube for you to paint with me. And I don't really care if you give this to your friends and family. I don't even care if you sell it to your friends and family. Here's a little thing in the art world. If you enter into an art show, you have to say it was done in a class. And you need to attribute, attribute it to who is the your teacher, your instructor. Right? And they'll let you know if you're allowed to enter a class done artwork. And you probably shouldn't make prints. You go on a mass production. So I'd have to do something about that. <laughs> but, you know, I want you guys to paint. So... If your friend comes up and is like, I'm so in love with this, I have to buy it, I want you to sell it because that is the joy of being an artist. It's like sharing it with other people. So, yes, that's totally okay. You know, just don't turn it into like your full time <laughs> business using my stuff. You know, and if you're if you're like unsure about something, go ahead and write me directly and ask me a question. Um, I am not like other painting places that shall not be named here um, that are really litigious not like that so you know just write me and be like is it okay if I give this to my friend and I'm gonna be like yes it's your friend have fun 
Because you're learning to paint. You're learning to paint. Get some more yellow, some more white, back into those peaches. Come over here. Get this little petal going. So I got some multi-tonal stuff happening here, which I like. And if I'm not getting clean edge and get a little water, pick up a little more paint. Right? Listen, I'm painting with the half inch shingle brush because I'm super comfortable with it. But if you're not, guess what? You probably have a selection of brushes. Okay? I'm going to fill up this whole corner with this color. You probably have a selection of brushes. Feel free to use them wherever you're comfortable. If there's a brush that just aggravates you, art is not about being aggravated, it's about feeling better. So if you're aggravated, change the brush. If you hate orange, change the color. I won't be offended. I'll still love to see it. I still want to know what you're doing. You know? Now, lots of colors you can do with this. You can do this in a cream. Right, which on your palette would be the white and that yellow ochre. You could do it with a purple, which I don't really have. You don't really want to mix cad red with yellow blue. You really don't want to do that. But you can get a dioxazine purple and do a purple background. It's really pretty. You can do like shades of purple and blue. I'm going to show you the blue because the orange and blue are contrasts. And actually, this was like... The color palette of it was like so very mid-century modern and so very groovelicious, and I love it. And so I'm just going to get my phthalo blue and a little bit of white. Now, there we go. And you're already going, wow, that's wonderful. Here's the deal. If you have student paints, you're going to have to, when we put the vines in, make one extra step. It, and student paints, what is that? Because I'm a new beginner painter because this is a beginning lesson. There are grades of paint in uh, acrylics and heavy bodied acrylics. And so like if it's like Liquitex Basics, it's a st student paint, but if it's Liquitex heavy bodied, that's a professional grade acrylic. And the difference basically is the amount of pigment that you have in the paint and the ingredients used to carry it. I may switch. To my one inch brush because I want to get through this background more expeditiously. Ooh, vocabulary words. Grab some white and working in the blue. If you work quickly when you're painting, you can paint what's called wet into wet which allows you to really blend, and that is very fun. Now, I'm not going to paint right up close with the big brush because it does not have the detail capacity that my smaller brushes do. So you got to have the wisdom to be like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the big brush to, get, to do some of this heavy lifting here, right? But... using it to do some of the heavy lifting. Plus it gives me that nice big wide brush stroke. I'm mixing more white into it and getting more into that sky blue. All right. This is taking some of the work. Remember guys, if you don't want to frame, you can paint around the edge. All right. Paint around the edges. If you buy the really beautiful gallery wrap canvases with the thick stretchers, Ooh, you just wire it and hang it. It's just done. Yeah, it's just awesome like that. All right, getting back into my half inch brush because it has detail capacity. Ooh, I 
just come along here. And this is where you work that edge. That's why it's good to practice those brush strokes because you're getting control over your brush. Art, if you're new to me, you'll, you don't know this, art and talent are completely misunderstood. All talent is is not some magical, mystical skill that you are born with. It is perseverance and determination, right? That's where you develop the skills and then life experience. And that's what people often start to refer to. That artist is so talented because they have used great perseveration, uh, uh, perseverance and they've used really strong determination and they've developed a lot of art skills but then their life has impacted them and they tell that story through their art and the way they mix colors and the way they choose to paint it and that life story resonates with other people and that's what gets them so excited about your artwork and everybody has those everybody can to, to learn their art skills everybody can learn them they're learnable and then it's just your life story and does it does it appeal to like a ton of people well then you might be very very famous but maybe it's a it's a small group of people. Maybe you have a very unusual life. But it will appeal to somebody. I used to not understand. I used to be like, why does that artist have fans? I don't get it. But as I've gotten older, I've come to realize because he speaks to them. He tells a story they relate to and they need to see visually. Visual story. Yes. That's F. That's F. All right. Look at this just going in. And so we're just working that the brushes angles. You know, if you're painting and a lot of white is showing through. Let's see if I can get this on here. If you're painting and a lot of white is showing through, you don't have enough paint on the brush, so get a little water, get a little more paint, load back up, try again. It's life changing. And so few things can be as life changing as art. Once you have these skills, once you've planted these seeds of creativity, once you start developing them and start telling the stories you want to tell, you're going to find being creative is a lot like being rich, because everything you think up you can probably make. And then the other great thing is, is the emotional and mental relief that it gives you. This time, it's important time. And you mamas out there, furry mamas, and mamas of little children, you need to take some time for yourselves. You need it, right? Kids will get it. They think art's very important. You don't even have to explain it to them. You're like, well, I need to paint right now. They're going to be like, can I paint with you? Painting is so important. They'll get it. You know? Your husbands will get it once they see you, like, feeling better. And you pull your husbands in, and he'll realize, oh, wow, this completely relaxes me after work. This is great. You know? And that's what it does. It's that gift of just feeling better and having fun and... That is the problem with the world. When you're not having enough fun. Taking it all too seriously. So you can see I'm pretty relaxed about this. Now, the tricks to how I get this sort of very nice look is I'm moving quickly enough to be wet into wet. That's about speed. I have a lot of that. Because I have confidence in what I'm doing. You know? This is just one of those paintings that really turns out for people, and I love it for that. The sunflowers, too, it just turns out for people. It just turns out just easy and fun and turns out, and that is a great introduction to art, and that's what you all really need, because so many of you I talked to you have had some art teacher, some family member say something to you during your creative years when you're young and you know art is important that made you feel like you didn't deserve to be creative. Like that some other mystical group of people who were talented deserve to be creative but you weren't one of them. And so therefore you should stop doing what you already knew 
you love to do. I really want you to think about that right now. You knew as a kid that you loved to color. You knew as a kid that you loved to paint. And then some Yahoo comes rolling in there with some wise little pearl about how you don't have talent or and I have actually heard of art instructors crumpling up artwork and throwing it away. I had one myself. Being committed by creatures who feast upon the flesh of their victims. Luckily I had so much intensity about being an artist that I did not give up. But they're out there and they do it and they were wrong and you had a right to be creative. If you come back to it, there's never too late to come back to it. It's never too early to get into it. I got two-year-olds painting with me. Yes, I do. And I have people I know from the metric in their late 80s. Let me get written me. I would love to have somebody over 100 painting with me. That would be really cool. I'd love to hear from you guys all around the world. I have, I have friends in Deutschland. I have friends in India and Taiwan. If you see my metric, you'll see just everywhere. I like picking my favorite countries. I'm just talking while I'm painting. <laughs> All right, come here. Film this little sliver with some blue. This is fun stuff. What happens if I make a mistake, Art Sherpa? Well, one, chill out. It's just art. I mean, Bob Ross said it. There's no mistakes. It's just happy accents. Relax about it a little bit. It was totally right. Everything. Bob Ross ever said was true. It is your world. You're the creator. You go get that melody sheet, Bob Ross song will blow your mind. It will blow your mind. Blow it. Blow in your mind. Now, I love when you guys share your original work with me, or sometimes you'll see one of my paintings, you'll get inspired, and you'll, you'll paint a version of it that's your own. I love that too. You guys are awesome. Look at this. It's wrapping up. All right. Now, sure tip. How do I fix a mistake? You dry the paint with the hair dryer. You paint over it. That's all you have to do. It's acrylic paint. You dry it with a hair dryer. Once it's dry, you can fix it. If it's wet, it is going to torture you to death. Don't fix things wet on wet. Dry them with a hair dryer. And then all of a sudden, it'll work. If you guys try to do it wet on wet, you get zombie colors. And you start thinking, oh my god, I don't have any talent. I really don't know what I'm doing. But you're wrong. You do. I'm the teacher. I'm the Sherpa. I'm telling you it's true. All right, now, doo -doo 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 -doo. we're gonna put in our seeds. And to put in our seeds, I've got this economical brush. I have this packet of really reasonably priced brushes that I like to use. I actually use them in my studio. I think they're like $3 Jerry's. They're Fundamentals by Creative Mark, and this is a size six. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to come with just some of the burnt sienna. And this is why it was so important to have put that, that black in there and take it more to the licorice. And I'm going to make the seed pods. And that is just, let me just make sure I'm getting that with my hand cam. Okay, little seed pods. We put in the hand cam because when uh, with the ally, people were like, I can't really see what's happening in the eye. It's stressing me out. And my whole thing is like, I don't want you to be stressed out. That's like not what art is for. Art is for if you're really upset or you're really happy for you to take that emotion and that space and put it on the canvas. And then you know that stays there. So I, I find happiness stays with me. But if I'm really sad or if something really bad has happened, I can paint it out. Now, some of you have written me with some crazy sad stuff that has happened that you have painted it out, and I haven't personally had to test those same experiences against the power of art. I haven't, but I'm really impressed with what you're doing. People have really dealt with some serious types of loss and sadness through their art. A lot of people are recovering from serious illness with their art. 
And this is some stuff. You know, it's good for your brain. Keeps that brain going. Those little art decisions. Keeps your brain happy as you go. We got a new brain. Does good for your new brain. I love when when younger people, little brushes, paint with me. Because they know. They know art's important. They know expression's important. Their whole world allows for expression. Thank goodness. I'm so glad my kids have that. Daughters makes claymations with her iPad. Yes, she does. She had some Barbie app she was playing. She made a movie. She did editing. She thinks she wants to come in here in the studio and help her dad edit. I might let her help. I might let her help. And then we're going to grab a yellow ochre. Yeah. And we're going to, in a, not the exact same spot, we're picking different little spots to put our yellow ochre seed pots. See, that's the part that helps your brain. It's the picking the different spots. Looking for the new area to put your yellow ochre. And here my daughter having returned home. I know she's not going to disturb filming. She's super respectful. And crazy adorable. Crazy cute. Got two daughters and one son. I like them all, which is really good. Okay. See that there? And we're going to go right there. I'm hoping that you guys are going to like the brush cam. And the hot cam and the me cam. So many cameras now in the studio. So many. So listen, this is not, well, one of the reasons I encourage you guys to go to Pinterest, go to my Facebook, is to see all the ways that people get these paintings done. So I'm going to show you some at the end here. All the ways that people get these paintings done. That, um, you know, work. There's just no one way to do it. Just like your handwriting, everybody's got their own brush stroke. Brush stroke is brush stroke is the fingerprint of the soul. You gotta open your heart to access your art. These are things you gotta keep in your mind. My uniqueness is what makes my artwork valuable. We have a copy machine that's covered. You don't need to be that. Every time I paint one of these, it comes out a little bit different. I'm in a different space. You know, some days I'm in a good place, some days I'm not. Not every day that I walk up to the canvas is a genius day. Not every day. Some days, not as much. I don't care. It's all right. Works for me. Okay. Seed pods take a minute, but they're really fun. All right. What I want you to do now is get a little of the yellow over to your white. And get sort of the ducky yellow white. I'm going to add more centered some of this color. Let's make sure that that sees it. I want to adjust my hat, then my husband makes funny clips of my hat adjustments. Now because some of these seed pods are wet, it'll do some mixing right there on the canvas. This is really where our oil painters live, is this wet on wet painting. We can do that now in acrylic because Golden has a new kind of paint called Open and they paint like oil paints were supposed to. For all the oil painters lose their mind, no, they don't crack, they don't do any of that stuff. Oil paints were always designed to thin coats. They were to um, help replace the egg temper painters. And so when they're painted thick or impasto, they can crack. The new Golden Opens, they don't crack. They're amazing, and they will absolutely paint weight on, wet on the wet. They're not cheap, though. So that's a thing. Hair in my eye. Ugh. Put my little seed pods. Put my little seed pods. I love doing this part. It's really fun for me. A lot of painting is sometimes in the details, especially in graphic pieces like this. It's just about your detail work. Seen some of you guys do this, and you have such beautiful detail. 
such beautiful detail. And I love it. All right. Last color. You can, of course, add more because it's your painting. Last one I'm going to do is I like to mix. And you're going to go, what? You said don't do it. I'm going to take a little bit of my cad yellow over to my blue. I'm just trying to change the tone of the blue a little bit. And then I'm going to get some white. I just want it to be a little bit different than the background blue. Okay, that's all we're doing is just making sure it's a little bit different. And this is some of that fun color mixing that's good for your brain. And I'm going to put just a few of these blue seed pods. See where I'm putting them? Right? Into the center of the flower. Right? Okay. Hopefully the hand cam is working really well. We can cut into that. I'm sure my husband will make it work. And we'll come up here. Alright, look at that. Just put in some little dashes. They're about a quarter of an inch long. Alright, so we've got that in. Whoa! No funny videos, John. Alright. <laughs> We're going to put in the vines. And here's the deal. If you have student paint, if uh, you had any of those beginner paints, you're going to have to paint your vines in white. And then after they're, you know, I don't know if you can see her, my furry, my furry child just came in. Greta. Uh, she, she may or may not show up. Oh, there she is. Shepherd. All right. Um, paint in white first and then paint your green over it. It's just because you don't have the opacity to cover over the blue. That's the trick. That way you're not sitting there struggling at home going, I don't understand why my paint isn't working and her paint works. My paint is Matisse. Heavy body paints, they're going to work. That's That was the whole point of getting them. All right, so I'm going to make some green. I'm going to make some dark green. And to do that, this is interesting, I'm going to get a little bit of my burnt sand. Or you're like, wait, what? And I'm going to come over to my blue and I'm going to darken my blue a lot. And I'm going to get a little of my yellow and mix it in. To this very dark green. This is a foresty dark green. I'm doing this on my half inch angle brush. Okay. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put in some hearts. That's what the leaf shape is. It's a heart. That's all we're doing. You can do a heart. You've been doing that since you're getting like a heart. I can do it. So the heart is a little half coming around here and one little half coming around here and paint that in. Yeah. Paint that dark, dark green in. Okay. Just paint in your heart. I'm going to go get some more of my dark, dark green. Alright. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to face a heart up. I don't know that I can. I'm going to move this camera down here so you can see what I'm doing. Know if your studio is anything like mine, but mine is full of noise. They really try while I'm filming to keep it quiet, but I don't really expect to keep it that quiet. I don't. <coughs> All right, nature likes threes, so I'm gonna put one over here. Now look, you can go crazy with your leaves. It's your time. You can experiment with me. Like, I think I want more leaves. Experiment. Can I be offended? I've done these paintings a lot. I've done several designs of this. So I kind of know how I like it. But you don't. So have some fun. Okay. Alright. I think I could use a leaf here and a leaf here. You know, maybe your flowers were smaller, so you've got a lot of open space. Fill it with leaves. No, there's this that's not wrong. Alright. Alright, now I gotta move this up. See what I'm doing. Gotta get used to that. It's gonna take me a couple of films. But I'll be a pro at it in no time. Again. 
be like, oh my god, I love the brush cam. Love it so much. Now I think I want a little leaf going off the edge here. Because it's very exciting to have objects leaving the canvas. That's a design thing you learn in art school. Is that if you want a painting to seem dynamic or exciting, some of your objects need to leave the canvas space. And if you want it to be very calm or static, you keep everything in that canvas. Little thing you may not know. Okay, so let's see. Put a leaf up there. I'm going to come down here and put a leaf down here. Maybe I'll put, put it kind of coming back into the canvas, leading the eye back in. It's another crazy design thing. You don't want your designs or your shapes that are pointing directions to point everybody so off canvas that they can't get back on and look at your picture. You can literally visually send them away. How crazy is that? Crazy but true. All right. Now, so we got our leaves. All right. And now we're going to make our highlight colors, which is very, very exciting. I just my awesome hat. I don't care. I love it. Okay, highlight colors. Let me center this up again to sort of see things. I just my awesome hat. I don't care. I love it. Okay, highlight colors. Let me see this up again to sort of see things. Right there. All right, so that obviously, we're gonna make a lighter color when we're talking about highlight colors. So we're gonna take our cad yellow and our blue. I'm gonna take a little bit of blue just right over my cad yellow and make a bright, bright yellow green. Okay. And if my leaves are drawn very lightly, this is light pressure. I like to say it's wet cat pressure. And you go, what? What do you mean? And what I'm saying is, how hard would you pet the cat? So if it's a happy cat that you just fed, you could really pet that cat and rub its face and have a nice time. But if you just gave that cat a bath, how hard would you pet that cat? Very lightly. Very lightly. All over the world, we know that. No matter where we live, we know an angry cat needs to be touched lightly. And that's how I get this. This is a dry brushing technique. Ugh. Is a dry brushing. I'm working it out, guys. I don't know what to tell you. All right, I'm gonna take it down here because I'm going down now. My husband will make sure you've got a camera on what I'm doing. Light, light, light dusting. Following the shape with the wide flat of my brush, letting the underneath paint show through. Dry brushing. If your leaves are too wet for this, hand with a hairdryer. Dry brushing. Dry, 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 And I'm missing it again because I go, I, you know what, you move like an artist moves and then you dry brushing. Okay. I'm going to come right here. Yes, sound effects help. Do not kid yourself. They absolutely do. Totally help. Now I'm going to get some white paint. And I'm going to mix it into my green. And I'm going to get a very, very soft green. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to switch to that detail brush we were playing with earlier. <gasps> Ooh, the detail brush is fantastic. I love it. Detail. Okay. And we're going to make that mint green. And that is a light green with a little bit of white added to it. Okay. I'm going to come here on the edge of the brush, making a thin line. Outlining the outside very carefully. And then I'm going to make a couple of strokes and we'll come around this side. Ooh, not quite Donna Dewberry. You guys remember who she is, but it's not a dissimilar idea. 
which is that we are letting the paint do the work. Always let your paint do the work. It's better for you. Oh my god, I'm actually where I need to be. had a couple refilms. I gotta tell you guys, no matter what shape this thing is in, it's going up online because I have refilmed and refilmed certain episodes because we had technical difficulties. This one, if you can remotely understand what I'm doing, it's going up. <laughs> All right, coming around here, around here, down the center. We're going to go up and show you what I'm painting. Down the center, so I've come down the center, around here, and like that. Isn't that nice? Now I'm going to paint up here this upper leaf. Woo! Here he is. Down the center. All right. Over in the corner. <laughs> I don't know that it was a good idea to give my own camera to operate. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Down the center, little brush strokes. And then we're going to do the curly cues, which are like my favorite, but hey, may stress you out. So just watch along. You'll love it. I feel like you'll love it. I feel like you'll love it. Okay. And so then I'm going to make a little stem. Okay, it's not showing. There it is. I'll get better at it, I promise. New camera, new everything. Make a little stem. And a little bit here. So the trick is that you want it to be light enough to really show up in the world that it's in or dark enough. So if you have a really light blue background, you better do a dark blue mint, a dark uh, green mint. But you know, if you have a really dark one, you can do a light mint. It's just, it's just judgment, just judgment there. Okay. Sometimes I'll catch it with a little cam, and sometimes I won't. You know, it just is what it is. All right, now I'm going to make a slightly darker green here on my little tiny brush. And I'm going to add just a little hint of that to my swirls where I have them. Not everywhere. Make a little slightly darker highlight or low light. If you do your hair, you know what I'm saying. What the guy equivalent for that would be. <sighs> okay. Oh, I really hope this works. I focus the whole time and my husband never checked it. I hope, I hope. All right. And then our last little step. Our last little step is going to be the detail on the flowers, which I'm going to do. Hmm. I'm going to go back into that. I'm going to take that, that cad red and that blue. And again, it's not a great purple for painting the background, but for this, it's very nice. I'm going to get some white to it is what it does is it makes like a like a very dusty kind of dark we want this light there we go are you seeing this there we go and then I'm going to come around and outline lightly center of the flower I'm going to run a little highlight on maybe the petals. Run a little 
little highlight. I need it to be a little lighter. Make a little swirl in there. So I'm just doing these little whimsical details. You could do this in straight white as well. You could do this in the red. I just like this because it's subtle. And this is again about that light cat pressure. And if you're not sure of this and you're feeling good about your painting, you don't have to even do this step. It is not essential. I just like it. It's really all it is. We're nearly done. Can you believe it? I hope that's how confident I am in that. One, because I just know that certain things will work out and it doesn't stress me out. I know like that these little finishing moves are going to be okay and my painting isn't going to fall a hole and never come out. Okay! Check it out! <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I told you it eats the neighbors. <laughs> We've done it. We've done blossoms. I think we're going to call it spring blossom. I like that. Spring blossoms. Now, I want to show you guys something, okay? Purple. Two flowers. All right. Lots of ways you can do that. Make it your own. I want you guys to uh, click. If you can, like it, comment about it, tell me what you think. I'd love to hear, I'd love to hear what's going on in your life, so I always try to comment back. Uh, subscribe, definitely, I'll even try to Google you. Um, I'm, I'm there, on Pinterest, you can see all my little buttons, I'm like everywhere, and the reason I'm everywhere is if you have a question, if you have a panic, I'm a Sherpa, I'm here to answer it, and that's what that's all about. So you can go to Facebook and share your artwork, there's nothing as recording as sharing your artwork, you guys' as friends are actually pretty supportive and they generally are really excited to see you being creative. They love to see what your kids are doing, if they're painting with you. It's great to see your families painting together. Do that. Paint together. Grab your friends. Paint together. Listen. Paint, 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 paint. Painting will change your life. It'll change the world. I'm going to see you at this easel really soon. And if you stay tuned, you can uh, come to the Sherpa Corner and talk to me about my artwork, which is pretty awesome. All right, see you really soon. We're having an art party. Why don't you come with me? All right. Straight from the heart party. Not everybody hat mark. No hat marking. <laughs> no hat marking. I'm off my hat. No need for words. I like this. <laughs> All right, let's try one more time. Hey, come on, let's go. Welcome to the Sherpa's Corner. Oh yes, I have a whole corner now in the studio, I love it. <laughs> I don't even have a corner in the rest of my house that belongs to me, it actually belongs to the kids. I wanna share with you, if you're not making this some of the places, some of the amazing artwork and people that I'm getting to meet while I'm on this uh, heart pretty journey. The first person's artwork I wanna show you, this is all from the Van Gogh Sunflowers that you can do in a different tutorial, is Melissa Pease. And Melissa Pease is fantastic. She's a mother. She's an artist. Well, she is now. And she even has, as her profile picture, the artwork that she's done here. This fabulous painting is, like, incredible. And she's creative in every area of her life. Like, she's super into, like, beautiful health food and all those things. And I really love seeing her stuff on Facebook. It's really exciting. Daniel Wilcock, who's also a mother, 
Now, she lives in Hawaii, but we love Daniel anyways, even though we ourselves wish we were in Hawaii. And she's always like, when are you going to come to Hawaii and teach class? And the answer is not, when am I going to come from Hawaii? It's going to be like, how would I leave Hawaii once I was there? There's no way you would get me out. It's like all sunshine and happiness. They could just be painting waves over and over again. You've seen my horses and waves, you know. So one of my favorite things about her, and this is her fabulous painting, is that um, she shared with me this fabulous email of like trying to watch Heart Party in like all the different rooms of her house, and her cat with his little paws into the door joined by her toddler. And I have to say I just love that. This next piece is by Rachel Viator. And if I ever say your guys' names wrong, it's, it, I'm an artist. I just, and the Sherpa, I don't know. She's um, a designer and she works as an artist, which, you know, clearly this is incredibly creative. And she's from Austin, which is awesome because I was from Austin and she's keeping it weird. Look at this, with the skull and the flowers. Totally weird. I love it. All right, now, Tony. Twisano. And again, Tony, if I said your last name wrong, I'm so sorry. Tony paints. She's made it a practice to paint. She just started. She like had been painting and she kept painting. And literally, as she's been sharing with me, I've been seeing her art skills grow because she has a lot of the big P and the big D, which is perseverance and determination. If you read my blog uh, about becoming the art Sherpa, you know what I'm talking about, how, how talent is really about just determination and perseverance and life story. Tony has all of that, and I love seeing all of her artwork. This is just a terrific piece. Hannah Noel has a different uh, name on Facebook to share with me, and I really like her stuff, but you know what's really important about Hannah? She's a Who vegan. So if you're not in the know, that's a Doctor Who fan. I'm a Doctor Who fan. In a future series of Heart Party episodes, we're going to cover Star Trek. We're going to cover Star Wars. We're going to cover Doctor Who. And we're going to cover Mid-Century Modern Rocketry. Oh, yeah. We're going to do it. We're going to geek up and have a lot of fun. All right. Then Nicole and the Cormier family. Again, I'm saying it wrong. I'm totally sorry. I love this family. They all paint together. It started out, Nicole was, this is um, paintings that Nicole did with her husband. And they were doing date night painting. So if you're thinking, I'd like to do this with my husband, they do this. They, they paint. And you know what? Sometimes in the privacy of your own home, they may not want to go out in public and do this, but they'll, they'll go stay home and do it with you because they like to do stuff. And men like to paint too. I have a lot of guys for painting with me. They're recovering from injuries or just trying to de-stress from work or they're just feeling creative. Or as I mentioned, maybe they're, they're bronies. I'm not picking them bronies, I swear to God. All right, and then I mentioned it earlier, but this is another example of what creativity will get for you. This is a fabulous shop on Etsy. No, I do not get these for free. These are what I buy. Awesome, 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 awesome. They got all kinds of tangled threads. This is Sassy Apron. Um, you know, I also like to use uh, Empty Nest Designs and some others. These are where I shop. So if you want to Sherpa up, you know, the red hair is kind of. I mean, I was born a redhead, but it at, at some stage in life, you augment your brain. <laughs> you augment your reality. So, misters, cake plates, keep it awesome, keep it real, keep it light. Art should be a part of your life. All right, I'm going to see you real soon. Bye bye.